Well, it's time again for our story, and this one is a good one. It's called The First Dog. Now, I don't have the cover on it anymore. We've had this around since our children are little, but that's the inside picture. And I'm going to read a little background for you. There's a big mammoth in there, along with some others. Called the first dog. And it is written and illustrated by Jan Brett. Little publisher's note. Uh, between 35,000 and 12,000 years ago, as the last of the great glaciers of the Pleistocene era advanced and retreated over the grasslands of Europe and the New World, people like ourselves, Homo sapiens, began to flourish. Hunters and gatherers, they wore clothes made of animal skins, had shell and bone ornaments, and used such tools as spears and knives. They made music and they were prolific artists. This was a time of exceptional artistic achievement and technological advance, and it may have been during this period that the first wild animals were domesticated. Jan Brett has created an appealing story of this possibility, setting in the breathtaking Ice Age landscape populated with animals that coexisted with early man in Europe and in the New World. The images and ornaments of her borders were inspired by the cave paintings and artifacts surviving from this time. So I'll start with a little picture there. Long, long ago, in the great days of the Pleistocene, Kip the cave boy bounded down the trail on his way home. He avoided the aurochs, the cave bears, and the mangaceros. He evaded the woolly rhinoceros, the wild horse, and the mighty mammoth. But he was getting tired and hungry, and he was still a long way from home. Look at some of those creatures from back then. He marched on until he saw a great rock. It was a good place to stop and rest. Kip reached in his bag for a woolly rhino rib, still sweet and smoky from his fire. Suddenly, up popped a paleo wolf, looking for leftovers. Wolf's nose began to twitch and sniff. He sniffed to the left, and he sniffed to the right. What are you doing, teased Kip. What can you smell in this emptiness? Paleo Wolf held his snout high in the air. With his keen nose, he could smell a rain cloud across the valley, the track of a tiny toad, the pelt of a prying pachyderm. But most of all, he could smell the roasted woolly rhino bones, and he gave a hungry whine. Pooh, said Kip, I can't smell anything but my dinner, and it's all for me, and he turned his back on the wolf. But Paleo Wolf had already hurried away, and when Kip saw the reason why, he was just able to get away in time. Oh, look at that. It's a big mammoth coming in there. Great big tusks. Soon Kip was back on the homeward trail. He walked on and on until he spied a cave. It was a fine place to stop and rest. He thought about another rhino rib, still crackly and crunchy from the fire. Up popped Paleo Wolf, looking for leftovers. Wolf's ears began to turn and dip. He listened to the left and he listened to the right. What are you doing, mocked Kip, taking a bite. What can you hear in this distance?
Wolf cocked his head. With his fine canine ears, he could hear a fish rise in the river, a leaf fall, the soft pant, pant, pant of a cave bear. But most of all, he could hear the snap of woolly rhino bones still crisp from the fire, and he gave a pleading howl. Pooh, said Kip. I can't hear anything except my teeth crunching on these very tasty bones. And he threw a clump of moss at Paleo Wolf. But Paleo Wolf had already hurried away, and when Kip saw the reason why, he was just able to get away in time. Soon Kip was back on the homeward trail, more foot sore and weary than ever. He trudged on and on until he saw a big tree. It was just the place to stop and rest. He climbed the tree and reached for a woolly rhino rib, still pearly and greasy from the fire. A pop paleo wolf looking for leftovers. Wolf's eyes began to sparkle and dance. He looked to the left and he looked to the right. What are you doing, jeered? Kip, what can you see in this darkness? Wolf's eyes glowed. With his sharp eyes he could see the shimmer of a distant drop of dew, a mouse scurrying far away, a feline sleeping high above. But most of all, he could see a pearly, greasy morsel of rhino bone shining in the moonlight, and he licked his chops. Pooh, said Kip, I can't see anything except, of course, my roasted, toasted, crispy, crunchy, pearly, greasy, woolly rhino rib. And you won't be tasting that because I want it all to myself. Then Kip yelled, shoo, as loud as he could. The yell resounded up and down the tree. It woke everything around. Instantly, Paleo Wolf's nose wrinkled and his ears went back. His eyes narrowed and his tail stood out. He looked so terrible that Kip threw the whole bag of rhino ribs down from the tree. Help yourself, Wolfie! But Paleo Wolf did not care about dinner now. His mane bristled and ridged down his back. A long growl shook from his throat. It was his last warning. Kip opened his eyes very wide. He looked around, but he could not smell or hear or see anything. He whispered, What do you know, wise wolf? But Paleo Wolf was gone. There is great danger here, thought Kip. I must disappear too. And he shrank into the leafy branches and made himself very small. Just in time, for high in the tree was the most fearsome creature of all, the saber-toothed cat. She crouched, she snarled, and then she sprang. She hurtled past Kip, hidden in the leaves, and pounced on the pile of woolly rhino bones down below. Wow, look at that cat. All that night as he sat in the tree, Kip thought and thought. He shivered over Paleo Wolf's last warning. It had not been one second too soon. The next morning, Kip climbed down. There was Paleo Wolf looking for leftovers. Together, they looked at the spot where the bones had been, and they were very gloomy. Finally, Kip made a speech. He said, Wolfie, if you will use your keen nose, your fine ears, and your sharp eyes to keep me from being eaten up, I promise to share with you all the woolly rhino ribs and even mammoth meat that I can cook over my fire. Paleo of barked, meaning yes! and he wagged his tail, the very first wolf to do so. 
When Kip saw that, he cried, and I will call you Dog, which means one who wags his tail. Then Kip the cave boy and the first dog went home. Well, there's our story about Kip and the first dog. Hope that everybody is staying healthy and happy, and we'll see you next time.